Josh Haskin here, Israel Uncensored, on the Land of Israel Network at thelandofisrael.com. It is the 28th of January, 2019, the 22nd of Shvat, 5779. Hope you're doing well in your part of the world. If you can get in touch with me during the week, josh at thelandofisrael.com is my email. On Facebook, it's Joshua Haston, and on Twitter, at Josh Haston. My guest on the show today is going to be Zahut Party head Moshe Faglin, former MK and potentially new MK if his party passes the, the electoral threshold. Very unique party, Zahut, if you're not familiar with it, so you're going to want to stick around and hear that after the break. Um, but first, we are going to get to some news here in Israel. Uh, the other day, this reported by the Jewish Press, jewishpress.com, there was an attack directed towards a group of hikers in the Shamron in Samaria, a group of hikers on the outskirts of the community of Adiad were attacked by several Arabs who ambushed uh, the hikers. One individual in particular was wounded. Uh, the Arabs attacked him, stabbed him with a knife, tried to drag him to their village. He managed to escape and get to the community of Adiyad, which was about 200 meters nearby, and let the uh, security forces know about this incident, about what happened. So the rapid response team from Adiyad went out to confront the attackers. And then from there, the IDF got involved as well. IDF and border police rushed to the scene, and at some point, one of the Arabs who launched this attack was killed. And of course, automatically, I saw headlines from different places around the world talking about settler kills Palestinian, and that's how it was presented. But according to an update here on the Jewish press, um, according to uh, a report by Hakol Hayehudi quoting Arab sources, the Arab who was killed, his name was Hamdi Naasan. He had a very shady security history. He was arrested in the year 2000, sentenced to nine years in jail for a variety of terror attacks, including shooting at Jews and planting a bomb. He was released in 2007 as a gesture to Mahmoud Abbas by the Olmert government ahead of the Annapolis conference. 430 Fatah terrorists were released from prison in that gesture. So here you already have a terrorist who was released from jail and he is killed in an attack against Jews. The media reports it exactly the opposite, saying a settler killed a uh, Palestinian, as they call him. Um, and details are still coming in. There's an investigation on this incident, but it would appear that hikers on Shabbat decided to go out and were confronted and their lives were threatened. And at the end of the day, the terrorist was killed. That's the way the story sounds to me. If there are any changes or whatnot, maybe we can talk about it in the days or weeks ahead here on the Land of Israel Network. But it seems crystal clear. What bothers me, though, and I said it again just a sec I said it a second ago, is the fact that automatically it becomes a settler kills Palestinian headline, and we move on from there. And unfortunately, the damage is already done because of a headline like that, which once again... Uh, uh, places the uh, the residents of Judea and Samaria under this microscope and does damage towards our ability to live in these areas in freedom and seeking quiet that we do um, because of that stigma which is created by these false headlines even before all the details um, are released. Uh, Nasrallah the Secretary General of the Lebanese Hezbollah, he uh, said, uh, he spoke the other day, he gave a speech, and he said the following, and I mean, you could talk about a lot of things that he said, of course, as smashing and bashing Israel and our Prime Minister and everybody else here, but he said, all of Palestine will be hit by our rockets. I think that is the highlight. It's actually the headline in the Jerusalem Post from yesterday's paper. Why is this the headline, in my opinion? Because notice how he says all of Palestine. He's not talking about the uh, the so-called settlements. He's not talking about the so-called communities in Judea and Samaria, um, which many claim. And unfortunately, the so-called uh, 
I am using the word so-called a lot, but <laughs> I want to make it clear, I, these Jewish organizations, if you will, saying that all the problems here in this region are because of what they call the occupation or the so-called, so there I get, I said it again, the so-called settlements. I can't say it, folks. I can't say the word settlements without saying so-called because they're not settlements. They're communities in Judea and Samaria. That's the way I view them. So I hate even using the terminology in case somebody gets confused that that is, you know, that that is a term that I, that I use. I don't use that in my vocabulary. But bottom line is to say all of Palestine will be hit by our rockets proves it's not about communities in Judea and Samaria. It's not about the victory in the Six Day War. It's not about all of that. It's not about the settlement. It's not about any of that stuff. It's about destroying the entire state of Israel. So thank you, Nasrallah, for once again admitting, I wish people, more people were listening, what the actual goals are of those who are doing damage to the state of Israel and then blaming it on our existence in our heartland in Judea and Samaria. Let's be crystal clear. All He calls all the area, Tel Aviv, Jaffa, everything, occupied Palestine. So more proof, If <laughs> it's not like we needed it, but more proof what the true goals are of our enemies. Speaking of our enemies, Hamas down in Gaza, uh, they just received another $15 million payment from the Qataris. Israel held up the payment and then decided to allow the payment apparently for humanitarian reasons into Gaza and to pay the workers down there. But this essentially enables Hamas, Israel once again, allowing more and more money to get into Gaza. Number one, Hamas oftentimes, whether it's money or whether it's equipment, seizes it, they steal it and they use it for their purposes, their terror purposes. Um, number uh, and, and number two, it just enables them to keep on their path their path of carrying out these weekly uh, violent riots on the Gaza border and attempted infiltrations into Israel and the balloons and the kites and, of course, the rockets. And, and this is just a terrible policy. Israel needs to just cut itself off from Gaza, turn off the electricity, it's, say it's not our problem anymore, stop enabling this evil Hamas regime. It reported by the J-Post, Israel allowed the transfer of the funds on Thursday, this past Thursday, after holding it up for a number of days because of escalating violence along the Israel-Gaza border. So that's real tough, right? Holding it up for a few days. It's like I remember when former Defense Minister Lieberman threatened that he was going to uh, curtail the fishing nautical mile rights of the Palestinian Arab, rather, Arab fishermen down there uh, who are fishing off the coast of Gaza. I mean, these are th these are just, you know, such minor... Um, actions taken by Israel and just continues. We, unfortunately, continue to enable Hamas in Gaza. I know the whole concept of Israel has to have an address. We have to have somebody to talk to, but Hamas isn't that address. Hamas is a, a, a maniacal terror organization who puts their own children at the front lines, knowing that they're going to get killed so they could use it for media purposes, has fired thousands of rockets. And why do we enable Hamas in Gaza? That is my question. Ireland, yes, Ireland is in the news in relation to Israel. The passage of Irish legislation criminalizing selling goods and services originating beyond, beyond the pre-1967 lines will have serious ramifications for the Israel-Ireland relations, uh, for Israel-Ireland relations, rather, and Ireland's status in the region. This, um, a warning by our foreign ministry uh, just the other day. Again, we're talking about Ireland deciding that they're going to make it a crime to sell goods and services which come from Jewish communities in Judea and Samaria. We'll have to see if this actually passes. From what I understand, the, uh, the Irish government um, will try not to allow this to pass, but if it does pass, it would mean that anyone who does business, any Irish man who does business in Judea and Samaria or any company from there would be fined up to 250,000 euro or receive jail time, jail time for doing business with Judea, Samaria. That includes the Jordan Valley and the Golan Heights. So uh, here you have some, uh, some lower court, I believe, in Ireland, which is trying to criminalize talking to the Jews, working with the Jews of Judea and Samaria. Now, here's some positive news. This is actually taken from a press release from the Paralympics 
website. The International Paralympic Committee on Sunday yesterday stripped Malaysia of the right to host the 2019 World Para Swimming Championships. They were supposed to be held between July, 20, uh, July 29th and August the 4th there in Malaysia. We talked about this on the show last week. The uh, president uh, of Malaysia, I believe, is he, or is he the prime minister, or whatever he is, the head of that country, uh, a rabid anti-Semite. But here we have some positive news. The, the Paralympic Committee deciding they will not allow these games to be played in Malaysia because of their discrimination, saying they would not allow Israelis to participate, Israeli swimmers to participate in the competition. Andrew Parsons, the spokesperson for the International Paralympic Committee, said all world championships must be open to all eligible athletes and nations to compete safely and free of discrimination. When a host country excludes athletes from a particular nation for, for political reasons, then we have absolutely no alternative but to look for a new championship host. So thank you very much to Andrew Parsons and the IPC for doing the right thing and moving those athletic comp. Uh, those uh, athletic competitions as a result of the discrimination against Israel, against the Jews by Ma uh, Malaysia. As I am talking to you now, 130, 130 IDF soldiers have landed in Brazil. This is a delegation sent by Israel to help with rescue efforts following the collapse of a dam that killed, uh, killed at least 40 and left at least 200 missing. This reported in this morning's Jerusalem Post. The delegation includes about 130 soldiers and officers in active service, as well as 70 reservists from the Home Front Command, um, engineering experts, doctors, search and rescue personnel, firefighters, Navy uh, troops, all these people, all these Israelis who are traveling literally around the world to try to help the nation of Brazil. We see this time and time again. doesn't matter if it's in Haiti or in Japan or in Africa, anywhere else, anywhere around the world. Israel's always there on the front lines, um, fulfilling our mission of being a true light unto the nations and helping wherever we can. So this is an unbelievable story, and uh, we should be proud of the blue and white. We should be proud of our experts here who travel around the world and set up these field hospitals and everything else they've done over the years in order to make the world a better place, in order to save lives in countries around the world. So Yishar Koach, as we say, to Israel, to the IDF, and everyone involved over there in that mission in Brazil. We're going to take a short break right now and come back with Zahut Party Head and Moshe Fagelin. My name is Josh Haston. This is Israel Uncensored on the Land of Israel Network at thelandofisrael.com. It is the 28th of January, 2019, the 22nd of Shvat, 5779. Hope you're doing well in your part of the world. Get in touch with me, Josh, at thelandofisrael.com. On Facebook, it's Joshua Haston, and on Twitter, at Josh Haston. Take a short break and come right back. Ours is an almost biblical generation of suffering and courage, said Menachem Begin. Ours is a generation of destruction and redemption. Ours is the generation that rose up from the bottomless pit of hell. Well, history didn't place me in that generation, but God gave me the gift of telling their tale. Because I'm Rob Mike Boyer, and this is The Jewish Story. Listen to The Jewish Story with Ralph Mike Foyer on thelandofisrael.com. Josh Haston here, Israel Uncensored on the Land of Israel Network at thelandofisrael.com. It is Monday, the 28th of January, 2019, the 22nd of Shvat, 5779. We're going to go to the phone right now. Very special guest on the line. He's the head of the Zahut Party, former MK and possibly future MK, Moshe Faglin. Thanks so much, Mr. Faglin. Welcome to Israel Uncensored here on the Land of Israel Network at thelandofisrael.com. Good morning, Josh. For those who don't know or perhaps are not familiar with your party, the Zahut Party, tell the audience, please, what does your party stand for in a nutshell? I know that's a broad question. While all the parties in Israel, left and right, with no difference between them, talking about deep state for us and two states for them, the, the Zahut Party is talking about three states for us and one state for us as well. 
Explain if you can. You want the whole land of Israel. The land of Israel is holy for us. It's part of our identity, our Zehut uh, identity, and, it's our, and, and we need our land to fulfill our, our, our mission and our goal as a nation. At the same time, we want the whole land, we want less as government involvement in our life as possible in the economy, in the education, in any aspect of life, we want, uh, we want to be free. We want to give the, the, the most, of, most of liberty to the, to, to the people of Israel, let my people go, okay? Let my people go from all the involvement uh, and the deep state that we have today. We want to flourish the land. We want to have a real good economy that, uh, uh, that every young couple feels and not only people that connected or somehow got all the bureaucracy and the inability to start a business or or or, or uh, having a normal salary uh, we want that we want a real combination of this two loyalty to our identity to our hand to our uh, land on one hand and freedom for the, from the involvement from the involvement of the government on, on the other so I read somewhere the other day that you don't consider yourself a right-wing party, a left-wing party, a center party. And I mean, those, there are those who will automatically label you a right-wing party. I mean, but where do you think, and I heard what your answer, less government and everything else you said, but where do you think that leaves you on the political map? Look, uh, what's the difference between the two-state solution of Netanyahu and the two-state solution of uh, Avi Gabbai? Is there any, do you see any difference between, much difference between the socialism, Catalan, the right-wing party, uh, in, in the right, uh, in the right uh, uh, government, and the socialism of Gaba, Lapid, or anybody else? They all talk about, <laughs> as they said before, two-state solution and socialism. And it doesn't matter, and there's no difference anymore between left and right. It's exactly the same thing. So uh, if this is what right means, means I'm definitely not there. Um, we feel free from this old uh, uh, kind, old conscience that, that means nothing. I don't care who's going to be the prime minister that the Hamas will defeat next time. We just got 500 rockets, and Israel is paying protection, paying millions of dollars in cash uh, in order not uh, to keep another day of, of COVID. And this is the right. It is really right, God, uh, right uh, wing, wing government. And we all know what the peace plan of Trump is going to bring right, right after the election. They're talking about it openly. They're talking about a, a, an American embassy in, in Abu Dhabi, which is East Jerusalem, for those who don't know. So basically, we're talking about a, a right wing government led by Netanyahu that will divide Jerusalem. So. You know what? If this is right, I am not right. Okay, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not willing to play that game and be part of that uh, of that of that process. As a whole party has a serious, serious platform, so you couldn't even have a platform altogether. Um, probably the only party that really has a serious platform of over over 300 pages that deal with all aspects of of, of life, and that's right. We get voters also from the left. It is voters equivalent to the to, 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 to the entire uh, uh, Israeli population. You get the voters from, from the right, of course, because, and even more than the left, because there's more right wing people in Israel than, than the left. But we get voters from all the spectrum, people who want essence, who want some direction, who want real solutions for the economy. For the, for the fact that you can't, you can't, a young couple can, cannot uh, dream of buying a house anymore in Israel because the, the land belongs to the government, 93% of it belongs to the, to the government, and not to the people, like every normal free state, because of the crazy bureaucracy of having permitted to build, and, and, and because of uh, uh, tons of regulations uh, on, 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 the, on, on the market. That make, Price is very, very high. We have to get rid of all that. We need to have a, a real free state on one hand and, and one state solution on the other, which means uh, one state for one people, 
with one guy basically talking about Jewish state and not state of all citizens. The combination of Zahut identity and Chirut liberty is inherent. Is 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 is, is uh, it's, it's two sides of the same token of 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 of, of, of the same ideology. This is the wide dramatic new uh, 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 ideology or or direction that. Uh, the Zahut party is taking the state of Israel. So what is, what is your policy, if you can explain to the listeners, in terms of what Israel should be doing in, for example, Judea and Samaria towards your party's vision of one Jewish state? What, we've heard a lot of plans on the left. We've heard several plans on the right. And I hate using those terms. Um, but what, what, in a nutshell, again, I know it's a long and complicated answer, but... What would your your solution be? We have people calling for sovereignty. We have people calling for sovereignty over certain areas. What is the Zahut platform when it comes to areas in Judea and Samaria? Well, you know that uh, I, I, together with good friends, established the movement Zahut 25 years ago to stop the Oslo process. And therefore, uh, and we blocked the roads and we did everything to do in order to stop this uh, a uh, horrible process of, of, of Oslo that brought only bloodshed, exa- exactly the opposite of of of, uh, of peace uh, on the people of Israel. And because we are the only movement who really, really tr- did that and try and really tried to stop the process and not just to demonstrate and to be on it, uh, uh, we remain free in our conscience from that concept of terri- of, of so-called Palestinians and territories A, B, and C, you notice that the terminology that uh, Ben is using is exactly the terminology of Oslo, A, B, territories A, B, C, so take this will be dividing the land, the land this way, dividing the land the other way. We're talking about the real loyalty, full loyalty, 100% loyalty to the, to the land of Israel, and we don't believe that when you're getting married, you can say, Hareyat Mekudeshet Li, uh, you cannot be, you cannot have a, a wife for for two husbands. The, 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 the land of Israel belongs only to the people of Israel, and therefore, and, and, and therefore, we should annex the land immediately. You should destroy Hamas. You should, you should, you should erase the, the terror organizations that we brought from Tunisia, as we call them, and call them uh, Palestinian Authority. We should. Uh, uh, bring back full and only sovereignty all over the land to the uh, IDF and, 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 the, and the police of Israel, and then we should we should simply give the people who live there three choices. One is to do what most of them wish to do and doing anyhow, which means in English to better places for them. We can help them with a lot of money because of spending. 12% of our budget every year on this craziness of Oslo and two-state solution. Israel, just to, to, to summarize it, Israel spent so far in the last in the last 20 years on Oslo, on that concept, over a, a billion shekel, it, it, which, which, which means uh, which means we could we could buy with that money. A, a tremendous house for free for a fairly young couple in Israel for that, for that money. And we keep on spending on guards and barbed wires and, and rockets against rockets and, 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 and whatever. 12% every, every year. So small amounts, small percentage of that, we can create what we call immigration basket. As we have some sleep time in Israel, we better still have you die. Immigration basket to, to uh, encourage and help those uh, Arabs who live, and I'm not saying Palestinians, they're simply Arabs uh, uh, who, who wish to find a better future uh, in different places, most of them do, and living anyhow, we can encourage them in, and in a very humane process, helping them integrate as they do anyhow, uh, and, and lower the numbers in, the numbers in, in, in a very big uh, amount. Those who will wish to stay, and has no background of, of terror or uh, by themselves or by, the, or, 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 or by their families will be uh, able to stay as a permanent resident and, ha- and will have all their uh, human rights. And there's a very, very small minority. 
I'm talking about a, a real small minority. That uh, I don't believe there'll be any more than that. That will wish to serve in the army and 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 go through serious serious tests of uh, of, of of getting a citizenship tests like you get uh, uh, in Japan and uh, and Switzerland, not in France and other other easy places to get uh, citizenship. Uh, those will be able to go. These these kind of uh, my, this kind of minority will be able to go through this. That process as well, and here you go. You solve the problem. You annex the land. Ramallah will look exactly like Ramle. Chevron uh, will look exactly like Yafo, like Jaffa, uh, and and Jetport, uh, the first generation, forty-eight, did uh, in, in 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 those Arab cities that they captured and liberated in the independent war. We find and for all will do. For those territories of, of, of our holy land that we liberated in 1967. I have many more questions, but we're nearly out of time. But I do want to ask you one final question. Even if Zahut does not, as you said, consider yourself a party on the right, um, in terms of the layout of the land now with so many different parties uh, that you have and options, those who normally do vote right, and again, I'm using that term very loosely, Shouldn't the right, whether it's with Zahud or with, without Zahud, and I, and I think your vision is different than the other parties, so I don't know if you particularly fit into this category, shouldn't those other parties perhaps merge so that votes aren't wasted? In other words, even if perhaps Zahud does not agree, let's say, with the policies of Habayit Hayudi or Otsma or the new right wing, uh, as they're called, the new right party, if you will, Shouldn't all, wouldn't it be better for the people of Israel uh, to have that option uniting all of those parties so that there's less friction and less wasted votes towards perhaps a better scenario, even if it isn't, let's say, the Zahud scenario? What would you it, say it, about that? I can tell you, I can tell you from, from an objective perspective, uh, um, um, it doesn't matter if, you, if I'm talking about left and right, I don't see a real difference between Otsma and Yichud uh, Leumi, and they, they definitely should unite. Uh, and the same thing uh, for those for Bayt UD and, and others. Um, the uh, Hood is taking votes from all the spectrum of voters of voters in Israel, uh, and talking about a wide message, and has the DNA of a ruling party. We have tomorrow an open primaries. And we're calling the whole population of Israel to come and uh, uh, numbered, uh, meaning who's going to be the first and who's going to be the second, third, and fourth, uh, and so on, uh, from our four of our candidates, the Knesset. Our candidates were elected from within the party by the people of the party and loyal to our, our platform. But uh, these 15 candidates will be marked down by the entire population because we see ourselves not as a just a right-wing party, but a future ruling party of Israel with a message to the entire population. We know already that we get votes from all the spectrum, including the left. And therefore, uh, uh, we are not in that game. We are not in that corner. we out of that corner. But you're definitely right that the other right-wing party should uh, unite. Moshe Feiglin, head of the Zahut party. The party's having, as he mentioned, primaries here coming up tomorrow, correct? Right. It's an open primary. And I call all the, all, all the Israeli citizens. Uh, it doesn't matter if you agree with everything the, the Zahut party said or just part of the things. Or not even agree at all, even member of, of, of another or a different party. Get into the Zahut website, zahut.org.il, and to vote through the website. You don't need to leave, to leave, your, leave your home. You're getting into our website. You see the candidates. You decide who you want to be first and who, who you want to be second. Be part, be part of the real democ democracy as, as, as you once had in those countries you came for, uh, and not a, 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 a democracy that others decide for you who's going to be a congressman or a congressman or a member of the Knesset. I wish you and your party much luck. Good luck with the primaries. Good luck with the upcoming elections. 
And uh, as we get closer to that April 9th uh, election date, national elections for the next Knesset, I would definitely love to speak to you again to see where things are and how things are progressing. So I want to thank you so much, Moshe Faglin, for your time today. Have a thank wonderful you. day and, and good luck with the primaries tomorrow. Thank you very much. And there you have it, folks. Moshe Faglin, head of the Zahut Party. And that is a wrap on today's show for Monday, the 28th of January, 2019. This is Israel Uncensored on the Land of Israel Network at thelandofisrael.com. It's also, by the way, the 22nd of Shvat. 5779. Get in touch with me during the week. Josh at the land of Israel.com on Facebook. It's Joshua Haston on Twitter at Josh Haston. And I just started something new. I just opened an Instagram account. And I'll be honest with you, I have no idea what I'm doing right now, but go check it out. It's Joshua Haston on Instagram. Um, any pointers that you might have on how to utilize that social media? I know it's the next generation and the, high, the highest percentage of those using Instagram are between, I believe, 20 and 29, if not a little bit younger. But check out my Instagram page as well and any, uh, any advice on how to utilize that platform for pro-Israel advocacy and the like. That would be uh, most uh, appreciative. Have a great week, everybody. Thanks to Benjamin Bresky, engineer extraordinaire, Tabitha Epstein for getting the shows up. Most importantly... Between now and when we speak again, please God, next Monday, everyone out there in the wonderful world of ours, be safe. Shalom, shalom from Gush Etzion, Israel. It's much more real than any reality show. It's much more dramatic than any drama. It's much more funny than any comedy. It's like a game show, but it's no game. It's our lives. Listen to Inside Israel Today. With Gil Hoffman, political correspondent for the Jerusalem Post, every week on the Land of Israel.